There we go. I think we're live and we're recording. Yay. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Oh, this is so great. So happy to be with you all today. So this is uh, an eclipse meeting. We're going to be talking about the energies of this eclipse. The first one's tomorrow, the next one on the 14th. And I'm also going to be introducing the upcoming Heart and Soul Centered Astrology Essentials program at the very end. So if you're interested in that, please stick around. I'll be opening enrollment during this talk. So I'm very excited for this opportunity. We're going to start off by doing a little meditation together. And we'll hold this space of being quiet as our way of stepping into attunement to what is happening now. As always, we know that the cosmos, as they unfold out there, they're also unfolding within. There's always a unity with all things in our lives. So we'll spend a few minutes here together in silence, and I'll start off with a few words of guidance and direction for our time in stillness. And then I'll just let it drop off to, to be quiet together for a few moments. I invite you to just get comfortable and to close your eyes and come into a quiet and receptive place. <clears throat> and just in a gesture of innocence and openness. to allow everything to just be as it is. Not to have an answer for the next moment. Not to give something a definition. but instead to actually experience what's happening right now. To hold the experience of right now with profound humility and devotion and reverence. It doesn't matter what the experience is. Fireworks or dole. But to offer a gesture of openness and trust. And we'll share this time together experiencing this moment for a few minutes.
there's always the shiny object, the shiny idea, and the shiny goal. It doesn't matter what area of our life this refers to, whether it's our spiritual path or studying astrology or business or relationships. There are the constructs that we hold in our mind according to what the external world has, it seems, painted for us. And this is in general a Capricorn thing. We have at this time, at this age, in this day, in this culture, in this society, in this world, all kinds of constructs that paint a story or an idea of what successful is. And what happens for so many of us, we end up walking this path where our, actually, let me just check in for a moment. For those who are watching, is there a speaker view going on or are you seeing a bunch of squares? Shelly, I can see you nodding your head. Yes, speaker view? Okay, great. That's all I need to know. Thank you. And it doesn't matter what it is we're focusing on, there is the sort of temptation everywhere we go to choose to associate, to choose to identify with what the world has said is meaningful, what the world has said is valuable. And they're all coming from the outside. They're all coming from crystallized constructs, beliefs, and ideas that are sort of inherited. Now, when you put Jupiter in Capricorn, Jupiter has been in Capricorn all year. So Jupiter is at its very, very end of the Capricorn journey, about to move into Aquarius. And there's a general understanding that anything at the end of a sign has a sort of culminative quality to it. And in this case, it is culminative. Jupiter is about to join Pallas. It's past all the other Capricorn planets. And it's moving to join Saturn in the very beginning of Aquarius. So it's very potent and very real to say that Jupiter is completing this very potent Capricornian journey that we've experienced through 2020. And so the thing that can happen with Jupiter in Capricorn is we have an idea of the goal, Jupiter, this expanded journey where we wanna grow and evolve and experience more and see more. And we paint an idea of it. And so we close our eyes, we come into meditation. And suddenly there can be this belief, Jupiter, this idea of what kind of experience we're supposed to be having. We can teach a course and have this Jupiter idea of what I'm supposed to be doing, what kind of experience I'm supposed to be providing. As a very Jupiter person myself, and those who have attended some of my classes recently, I've been very Jupiter oriented this year, a lot of Jupiter classes. I can definitely speak that it's incredibly easy to have a belief, an idea of something, and then to convince oneself of that idea. And when you place that in the Capricorn context, it's not just self-convincing, it's sort of hidden in this sheath of this is the right way, right? This is valuable. This is what it looks like to really get somewhere in this world, to be successful, to be credentialed. So a practice that I deeply value and that I share here is just this practice in our life of looking for the experience of what is. And the experience of what is, is never necessarily fancy. It could be fancy. It could be very glamorous and it could be very interesting, but it could also not be. It can just sort of be, hmm, this is what's happening right now. And thus we have this very unadorned, natural and authentic experience that comes through. And there may not be anything to show for it, anything special, anything fancy, anything impressive to show for it. And I feel this place of maybe often plainness is where the journey really, really begins. And it's a very simple idea. If we want to go on a journey, if we're going to 
put a clo put clothing on and walk outside, the first step is to actually know what our body needs, right? Am I cold? Am I warm? What's the first step? Do I have feet? Okay. Do I need shoes? And we can just get very used to um, sort of immediate pattern of acting and doing with a story of where we're going and what it looks like. Now I'm sharing all of these things because this is what's up right now. These eclipses are really impacting and pointing very deeply to our conditioned sense of certainty, our conditioned pattern of self-conviction. And the self-conviction, it just applies everywhere we go. You open the refrigerator to get the food out and are you eating what your body needs and wants? Is there a felt experience, a felt sense of knowing what the path wants to be right now? Or have we fallen into a conditioned pattern that goes unchecked? And again, the challenge, the struggle with Jupiter and Capricorn is the strength of our belief system, right? It's like, we it's not enough to, to know what we're doing. We have to actually uphold it and tell ourselves why this is the way. We need to create a whole construct and tell ourselves, you know, if I do this, I'm going to get here. This will take me to my goal. If I eat this, it's good for me because my body needs this, this, and that. There's a whole lot of construct in the mind that can very rationally justify and prove it for why what we do, why what we think, why what we say, why the path that we're walking is definitely necessary, the one that we have to walk. And what happens is we don't ever really allow ourselves to grow. And there's a point of humility here. I mean, just look around the world, look at our own selves. There's a point of, okay, am I getting where I really want to go? Is this really working for me? We often associate Capricorn with the archetype of the devil because the allure of the devil is that sense of here, here's all this certainty, here's all this knowing, here's all this um, structure and status and success and money and fame and importance and certainty in what you're doing. And it's all here for you. And yet what happens is we end up giving ourselves over to the structures, to these things that look really good, that have an appearance of being stable, successful, grounded, awake, spiritual, grounded, good at relationships, of perfect relationship, um, the perfect course, the perfect teacher, everything. But it's just a shell. And there's no content inside. Every morning you eat your eggs and toast. And, and yet it's like, what's actually wanted? What's really needed? Every day we do this relationship and we act and we treat each other the way that we do and we have the roles that we play and it's great, everyone's happy. But what's really underneath it all? Right? Are we really thriving? Are we truly in a nurturing relationship to the cutting edge of our own spiritual growth? Are we connecting with a structural reality that is truly essential, truly relevant, truly helpful, truly of essence to who we are and where we are going? So the allure of the devil is that sense of here, create some kind of stability in something that actually is empty. Don't know yourself. Don't find your own authority. Don't come to understand your way of living in time and space. Don't form a relationship to everything that reflects a deep self-knowledge and commitment to know yourself. And so the Capricorn journey really invites that quality of introspection and reflection to know ourselves. Is this working? Am I getting where I want to go? You know, if you think of Jupiter as the pilgrimage and then Capricorn as climbing the mountain, it's basically, are you getting where you want to go? Is this working? One of my favorite questions that I always like to ask is, is it working and what's it for? Having the honesty to ask that question really potentially brings us back to a foundational starting point where we get to reassess what our true intentions are. So Jupiter is the ruler of the South Node. I'll take a step back and I'll define the nature of these eclipses and connect it to this Jupiter journey. Eclipses always happen on the nodal points. 
So we have the North Node and the South Node. And it's going to be a new moon or a full moon. This eclipse happening on the 30th, on Monday, is a full moon. And that would be a, I always forget, this moon's in the middle of the soul, a lunar eclipse. The Earth is casting a shadow on the moon. And the new moon that happens on the 14th would be a solar eclipse. So the moon's going to be in Gemini on the North Node. The sun will be on the South Node in Sagittarius. First, my perspective on eclipses in general is they are portals. They're portals because the nature of the nodes in general, you can think of them as sort of the entry and the exit points of energy. We have this present moment that we can sort of use this framework of understanding. Our consciousness right now is conditioned according to what's come before. Inherently, what's come before has nothing to do with right now, and that's a part of the awakening. Like we actually realize, oh, wow, not, like this moment has nothing to do with the past. That's an inherent truth and a very beautiful truth. But our consciousness, our condition, our sense of self, our identity, which is very much a lunar thing, our sense of self is moon nodes, is conditioned by who we've known ourselves to be, how we've come to know ourselves, what has brought us into this present moment to shape our sense of self. And as we evolve, as we learn, as we grow, we're forming a new relationship to ourselves, gaining new experience, which shapes and conditions our understanding of who we are now. There's an ongoing experience of new. I've never been here before. This is a new experience. What is it like to be here and to think in this new way? And that's a North Node. So eclipses happening on the nodes, always happening on the nodes, eclipses relative to the nature of the nodes, they really emphasize the, the portal of the nodal energy. It really emphasizes this quality of here's all this stuff that's conditioned who you are. Let's bring it up, right? So when we have a strong south node energy, so for example, the 14th will have the solar eclipse on the south node. That's bringing up a lot of south node stuff. So it's all of the conditioning that's led you to know yourself as what you are now, which includes memories karmic dynamics, karmic relationships, elements from the past that are all relevant and ready to blossom now. These are all pieces that come up during the eclipses. So a lot of energy can move really quickly, a lot of growth, a lot of quick insight, a lot of quick understanding and realization. And thus having the inner orientation during any eclipse cycle to be oriented towards growth and evolution and fundamentally holding a non-reactive stance because the energy of the eclipses can be very volatile, naturally. But holding more of a relaxed and non-defended stance, it allows whatever's meant to come through to come through. It allows us to learn and to grow and to become more empowered in our own evolutionary direction. Now, this cycle in the Sagittarius Gemini axis is full of many different interesting elements. I'll share my chart and I'll define some of these pieces and go more deeply into the specifics. So this is the eclipse tomorrow. You can see on the bottom, we have the sun with the south node and Jupiter rules that. Ignore the houses. Houses are relative to where you are in the world. So it's just important to look at the position, the signs that all the planets are in. Jupiter is moving towards Pallas, moving towards Saturn, and they're going to be conjunct in Capricorn. At the same time, you have Neptune, which just stationed direct, squaring these eclipse points. Neptune is squaring the nodes. I'll start with this point. The energy of Sagittarius ruled by Jupiter does have everything to do with our understanding and our comprehension of reality. Neptune moving direct now, squaring the node says, we're always on some level trying to say what things are, right? So you're having an experience and immediately the mind goes to interpret that experience and say, okay, this is what's happening. This is what it means. This is what's going on. We look at life and we'll say, okay, this is my perspective. This is my view politically. This is my view of what's happening in the world, or this is my view of what you need to do for yourself. This is my perspective. 
And when you really bring Jupiter and Capricorn, this is my judgment. This is my absolute moralistic perspective and view. Neptune stationing direct in the square to these eclipses really says there is a directive and an intelligence to your soul journey, to who you are and why you are here, that is not of your own making. There is meaning, there is purpose, there is value to life that is not contained within the realm of our judgments and our ideas. So the perspective of love, the point of view of love, of unity, of wholeness, does not look at life and have any constructs of right and wrong. It does not look outside and say, okay, this is the right way to think, this is the wrong way to think. You're doing this food thing right, or no, you're doing this food thing totally wrong. Um, this is the right political affiliation, this is the wrong political affiliation. To really understand that, anyone at any walk of life, any belief system, any religion, any philosophy, any diet, Terry habit, is prone to the possibility of grace, of love, of unconditional love, of beauty, of peace. When it rains, it rains on everyone. When it shines, the sun shines on everyone. There's an indiscriminate nature to the, to the consciousness within Neptune that isn't judging. It doesn't know any difference. So Neptune is what's essentially true. And the answer to what's essentially true is never concerned with specifics. It's never interested or oriented in any way at all towards a particular context. It transcends all context. And so this Neptune stationing direct squaring the nodes, two really important pieces come forth here. One, this is an opportunity to really be guided. This is the time to be guided. Do you think you need the answers? Do you think you need to know where you're going and how to get there? If you examine for a moment, what is the sort of philosophical framework that we hold in our mind about our path that we project on the space in front of us. So we're climbing the mountain and we are telling ourselves, this is what it's supposed to look like and this is how it's supposed to go. To what extent can we throw all of that out of the window and give ourselves to grace? To what extent can we throw the need to lead out of the window? and explore what it's like to be a blissful follower. And being a follower here, the, the grace and the beauty of what that really means is to not need to know the answer because the answer is a very subjective and circumstantial thing. The answer can be like, I'm eating this right now, great. I'm teaching this class right now. I'm setting up this training program right now. But the directive of what's actually happening, you know, what's actually happening here? What are the gifts that are being shared and received? What is the deeper nuanced journey of each individual soul that comes to take this program with me? I have no clue, right? All I can do is know what is it for? What's my intention? What's my underlying orientation for why I'm going about to do this? And the rest is out of our hands entirely. So the Sagittarius Pisces axis really invites a gesture of sincerity and authenticity to know what we're doing to walk this path, but not to be holding such a strong belief structure, belief system that tells us what things are supposed to be. I wrote down a few beautiful notes here that I want to share. We often have this experience of being in relationship to the energy of confusion or uncertainty or not knowing. And we want to, you know, cover that up with a sense of, no, I know, or this is what's going on, especially with Jupiter and Capricorn, right? Because the idea with Jupiter and Capricorn is there can be a shame in not knowing. There can be a shame of I'm this old or I'm this trained or this practice and I'm still not fill in the blank. The teaching that I want to share here, which I find to be so beautiful and just really helpful to meditate on my own journey is love can use everything. There's this um, 
compassionate understanding that everything in our life can be used by the source of all things. So if you're driving on a road and you're driving and you're going 10 hours in the wrong direction, so you had a direction, a goal in mind, and you realize you've been literally driving in the wrong direction, there can be a deep sense of failure that accompanies that. So metaphorically, you're off the path. You realize you're, you're going in the wrong direction. So you turn around. It's very easy for the mind to have a sort of futility, like, oh man, now I've just lost 20 hours of my life to feel like we've lost something, to feel like there's a mistake that was made and we're off the path and now we got to atone and make it up and fix it all. But that's not how it works. It's never how it works. If we were hurtful towards one another, or if we were acting in a way that was not in integrity, if we were lying, if we were not honest, if we took advantage of one another, the moment we realize it, the moment we set our minds to reorient to the truth, which is always sort of, it might be uncomfortable, but there's always a gesture of humility um, and starting over again. You, you know that feeling of, okay, I'm starting over again. Um, we might feel exhausted and maybe a lot of shame or embarrassment, but at, at a certain point we get to that sweetness of what else can I do but start over again? And it takes a little bit of time, but you start driving, maybe you're an hour into it, and, and the mind sort of loosens its grip on the story of I made a mistake. I wasted all this time. You give something enough time. And eventually we start to feel like, okay, the path is right here, right now. The truth is, the actual reality of it is, the path is the moment we reorient, the moment we acknowledge our mistake, the moment we acknowledge, okay, I was living a certain way that wasn't true. It wasn't authentic. I wasn't being honest. I was telling myself all these things. The moment we acknowledge that, is where everything returns to us. And the reason for that is love, the Tao, doesn't see distance. It doesn't see you're 20 hours away from your destination, right? It doesn't see there's all this stuff in the past between you and your neighbor that you have to heal. It just sees the truth. It just sees that, it just sees that there's unity, that there's love. It just sees that you've arrived right now at who you are, that the nature of truth is actually manifest right now where you are. And so because of that, and this is a Neptune principle, the oneness has the intelligence and the capacity to use everything for the purpose of the oneness. Like the moment we remember is the moment where everything is then used and designated for the path of return. So if you're trying to drive to Idaho and you have this many hours to Idaho and you're still in California, it doesn't matter. You arrive at your journey and then the people show up, the gifts show up, because what's your purpose? What's our purpose in life? So the Capricorn temptation can be, well, my purpose is you know, to become the CEO of fill in the blank and to make this much money or to, you know, become a successful author, successful teacher and, um, or to have a family or to get married, have a good relationship. And those, those things are not our purpose. They're circumstantial, they're relevant for a time and we drop them when we are ready to drop them. The only true purpose from a Neptune perspective is itself, is the love that we are. And so on our awakening journey, what we're all doing, what we're all remembering is what we are. And that the purpose of life is the remembering of itself. And that happens wherever we go and wherever we are and whoever we're with. So the Chattacharius dynamics, we think we're going somewhere, right? But the teaching is right here, right now. And the healing is right here, right now. So in lieu of that, there's this teaching, even the moment we begin to delude ourselves, even the moment we tell ourselves a story that isn't true, in that moment is the path of correction planted. Because our confusion is just happening relative to what isn't confused, to what can't be confused. So the truth isn't something that doesn't go away. 
it's not something that will ever have to endure a process to find and return to. And so the moment we are confused is the very moment that spirit is available to use our body, our relationships, our mind, our conditioned ways of thinking, the circumstances, our computer, everything in our life as vessels, as a template for the return of awareness, the return of clarity. And so from this perspective, this eclipse is really inviting a lot of space because we don't know where we're going. We have our conditioned ideas and our beliefs. And it might be really strong and there might be a lot of certainty. And so this is a time to relax that, to open that up a little bit. I received a teaching in my dreams um, a few months ago when I was beginning to sort of conceive this training program. I was told, you need to put more weight in your work and laugh at yourself more. And I, I love that idea because the idea of putting more weight into my work sort of brings that quality of it's time to show up to really bring my full energy to walk the path that love wants me to walk, but to laugh at myself because it's not a doership kind of thing. It's not like I got to do it right and not do it wrong. If we understand that there is a path wanted of us, there is an orientation that is not of our own making, a directive leading the show, then we can cultivate a mindset of being open to what's happening right now, just the experience that we're having right now. And there's a teaching that I've been really loving and me and Michelle are talking about this in the last Neptune video. We notice what we're experiencing, maybe what's running through our consciousness, and then we can sort of pivot and ask, what's your will? Right? What would you have me see? How would you have me see this? Knowing we have so much past in our mind, so much conditioning, sort of filtering the way that we think about everything. So another aspect to this eclipse is Jupiter is moving to Pallas. And Pallas, the way I connect with Pallas is there's a quality of profound sovereignty and I'm going to do it my way no matter what. Now, the challenge with Jupiter conjunct Pallas in Capricorn can be, of course, a lot of dogma, a lot of certainty, and a lot of, I don't care about your truth or your way, I know what I'm doing. But really, this is an opportunity to connect more deeply with our own inner authority and to not seek the external approval, to not try to fit into the way other people are thinking, to know what is the path that I am to walk. Now, as Jupiter is moving into Aquarius, there's something important to recognize. We often look forward to getting out of that Capricornian world because Capricorn can be very dense, very heavy, very thick. And there are some reflections that I wrote down that I want to share with you on this. If we're repressed in Capricorn, right? Our repressed Capricorn consciousness, our beliefs and our constructs and our ideas that are repressive, we don't break out of them when we move into Aquarius. It becomes anxiety. Trying to climb the Capricorn mountain to become successful at all costs, to be right at all costs, becomes alienation in Aquarius. It becomes, le I'm left out. I'm an outsider where other people don't belong. Patience and wisdom in Capricorn becomes liberation and freedom in Aquarius. Because the patience and wisdom that we're cultivating in Capricorn is the patience and the wisdom to know ourselves, to study ourselves, to study our path. What is the work that you would have me do now? Where can I become more disciplined in my training, in my practice? to take the responsibility to do the work that I am to do that no one else can do for me. And there's a quality of, okay, in the Capricornian realm, there's a sense of joy and peace that comes in knowing that we're doing what we need to do and we're structuring our reality accordingly. And that sets the foundation for freedom, for peace, for joy, for liberation in Aquarius. The slowness that we apply in the Capricornian realm becomes a quick 
and rapid surprise in Aquarius. Like, there's a natural timing to all of this. So all this energy happening right now during these eclipses, really emphasizing the end of this Capricorn journey is just inviting us to go slower, look at ourselves, be very honest, be undefended. We also know that Mars is completing its journey right now and is yet to square all of the Capricorn planets. So we're still in this period where that directive certainty and clarity of this is where I'm going, this is what I'm doing next, this is the, the, the certainty of my path. Mars is directive, it's the next thing, the next thing we're still going to learn a lot. So we're still in this very big unknown. There's a lot of energy and new experience, new encounters that are going to be shaping ourselves for the next year and beyond, all within the next several weeks. So let me share the chart one more and look at the second eclipse with you guys. So here we have the solar eclipse. Mercury has now joined. And it doesn't see this here, but the day after the eclipse, Chiron stations direct. And at that point, Jupiter is pretty much at the 29th degree of Capricorn at the very, very end. We also have Pallas, uh, sorry, we have Vesta squaring the nodal points as well. And Vesta is squaring the nodal points right now, but it's actually moving to a tighter square. And it's really tight during the second. The second eclipse is a lot more potent than the first. And so this really emphasizes right now the sacred work that we are called to do, right? It's like, what is the room? What is the space that we are designating and honoring and devoting for holiness in our own life? Especially with Chiron now going direct, there's a sense of we all have a path to walk. We all have a mission. We all have a purpose. And that purpose is relevant to what's awake and alive right now in our own journey. Things to watch out for, especially during the second eclipse, is dogma, right? The, the two shadows of Sagittarius here can be the dogmatism of knowing and also the sort of the wandering, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know where to be vibe. Because that wandering is just another form of dogma. That telling ourselves, I don't know what to do right now is actually because underneath we're thinking we need some kind of experience beyond the one we're having right now. We think that there's something beyond right now. And we have to remember that there is no growth without doing the work. So if we're just expecting something great to happen, you know, Jupiter then moves into Aquarius and it doesn't necessarily get better. So the work right now is to really know what is the work for me to do. This, this is genuinely, if you're climbing the mountain, if you're, in the, if you're in the school, you are training, you are studying, you are practicing, you are creating a structural reality to strengthen the way in which you are expressing your own realizations in life. To strengthen the way in which you are living authentically as you. If you're learning what kind of food you eat, this asks you to really listen to that, right? To really think about where can I get that food? What kind of practices every day really work for me to feel great when I eat, to feel optimally alive and awake and engaged and excited? And the Vesta quality here relative to the North Node in Gemini, and you know, the North Node during the eclipse is sort of like the guiding evolutionary force. So within all of this, it's keeping an open mind. People don't often understand that Gemini as well has a lot to do with travel. It's not travel in the same sense of Sagittarius, which is like, you know, in a moment, you'll go to India because you have this intuition that there's something you're supposed to do there. But there's travel in Gemini. In fact, there's a lot of movement. There's a lot of discovery. There's a lot of exploration. And the nature of Gemini is, you know, if you're, if you're very small, you can fit into a lot of spaces. If you're not really big with a lot of ideas, with a lot of identity, then you're more accessible to interactions and connections and relationships and encounters that you never would have thought of. So there's a lot of synchronicity, a lot of new opportunities here. But being aware of where our minds are, any kind of dogma, any kind of fixed position, fixed opinion. We're coming into an age as well where we're starting to really collectively understand. I mean, this is sort of integrated in, in many of us, but it's not 
a, there's not a full knowing where there is no longer a lot of glamour and importance around everything, right? Like, okay, making a lot of money, no big deal. Waking up spiritually, no big deal. You know, having a happy, great relationship, no big deal. Because we're learning that it's inherent to life that we're well. Like that it's inherent to the framework of life as it is to thrive, to live well together, to be in peace, to be in harmony, to be in community. And so when things go really well, it's like not a big deal. We're actually learning how to see and think in a way that supposes wellness and thriving and alignment and balance as just how things are. And the reason why good things have seemed like a big deal is because we're so used to things being crappy. For hundreds of years, it sucked. Like life on this earth and in patriarchy and in the constructs of culture and society that we are familiar with, of course, we all know, have been really, really hard. And we all come from that history. And so we're just getting used to, we're just learning to orient to a way of thinking, a way of being where it's not about healing things that are messed up, right? Where it's, it's more about, Let's get back on track with what we actually are. And so this is a precious time to, to do that work, to really have that optimistic attitude that life is designed to support our waking up and that thriving and being well and being healthy is just what wants to happen and that we are supported. All of the ingredients, this is a Neptune, everything's provided because the oneness is using everything for its own purposes. So everything is devoted and designated to the path of return. So in summary, the way that I would really characterize the remainder of this year, the remainder of this eclipse season to give it a couple sentences, there's a lot more newness about to unfold. No one knows what that looks like. You don't know what it needs to look like. You can know yourself in this moment. And I can say that again in a different way. Spirit has a plan for you. Spirit has a plan for all of us. And we need not understand and philosophically grasp the entirety of that and how it's all going to work out. All we need to do is explore that place where we can open up more joy and willingness and adventure. Anytime we're working with strong Sagittarian Jupiter energy, it's important that we feel that quality of pilgrimage, that we feel that quality of adventure, like we're going on some kind of journey and it's going to take us somewhere important, somewhere special, that there's meaning, there's something purposeful here. So I would love to open up the space um, sometimes with questions and whatnot that, that opens the door to, to more thoughts or more reflections. So I'll give a few minutes for questions and then I wanna move into talking about the training program that opens up today. So you're invited to unmute yourself if you have any questions or anything that you wanna share um, about this eclipse season. Um, one more point, this is sort of obvious. So we have this whole eclipse thing going on. This is all just before Jupiter enters Aquarius with Saturn. So it's like clearing all this energy. There's a lot of um, emphasis right now in the world around, um, you know, beliefs and your point of view and how are you seeing things? And it, this is happening politically, but also in our own personal life. If you look at the microcosm, we can find as much possibility in terms of perspective and conviction is never useful. E even in your own personal life, your own, your own choices, your own decisions that, that like, this is absolutely right. It's never useful, but the stillness and the confidence and the peacefulness in listening and just taking the next step that we know is right for us. There's a blessing here that I want to share a prayer that says we can live in a way of feeling strong, feeling stable in doing the work that we are to do 
and no one needs to know it. No one needs to see it. No one needs to see the amount of effort and practice we're putting into our own work. We just get to enjoy what it's like the moment we course correct, how everything comes together. Even if we're not in Idaho yet, everything comes together in that moment. And we get to enjoy the, the perfection of that. There's nothing more beautiful in the Sagittarian Jupiter experience than having that realization of, oh my Gaia, all of this really works. Like there's actual meaning and truth here. Like there's actually something going on. Like what's this all about? And there's nothing more beautiful within the Neptune realm of getting to rest peacefully in this knowing. Okay. So yeah, anyone have any questions or want to share anything? Okay, so what I'm gonna do here now is talk about this training program. Oh boy, okay. So I'm actually going to um, launch it right now as I am speaking to you. So let me go to my course page. I'm gonna launch it and then I'm gonna share the screen with you. Uh, save. How do I launch it? Go to the information page. There we go. Publish course. Yes, publish course. I said it once. Okay. Now let's go. I'm going to share my screen. This is the Heart and Soul Centered Astrology Training Program. The Essentials course. So this is part one. We start in January with the Essentials course. And um, let me just talk to you about what this course is all about, who it's for, and why I'm doing this. In fact, I'll stop sharing my screen for a moment so I can talk. <clears throat> the first thing that I want to say is I have been scared of teaching this course. Um, it's been in the field for a long time. A lot of people have been asking me about it, um, wanting to train with me, wanting to study with me. And I've been teaching uh, classes for many years. I've taught evolutionary astrology beginners courses several times. And um, for the past several years, I've been teaching with Kaipacha, a new paradigm where we were doing, we were doing a whole training program and other little courses. But what I've never actually have done was step forward in my own way and create a, a, a context, a course that's actually about me teaching from my own inner realizations. And my fear has been a Sagittarian fear. My fear is, well, if I start teaching, I'm going to not be honest. I'm going to teach the same thing that I've been telling myself for all these years, the insights I've had five years ago, the way that I've talked about it in the last course that I taught. It'll just be a robotic recapitulation of what I already know. And that's exhausting. And also there's a level of guilt that comes in that. The guilt that comes in that comes for any one of us when we're driving on the path and we're not actually there. We're living out an idea of what there is. The guilt is because suddenly we know we're unconsciously blocking off the truth. We're choosing to replace the truth with something that we've already decided. So it might look very good, but we know it's not actually honest. And so the fear for me in teaching is like, I'm, you know, teaching would be up here. I'm used to being down here where I can, in a way, hide in, in, in the things I know how to say and the things I know how to do really well. But being up here would actually mean looking inside, actually coming back to all of the teachings and to look back inside for the first time. What, what's the natal chart? What does it mean to me? What's astrology purposeful for? Why am I doing this? What does Mars mean? What's Chiron all about? What's Pluto all about? And I've taught these things and I've been deeply immersed in the evolutionary astrology world for, for my whole adult life practically. But to actually look back inside and reap the fruits of my own realizations, reap the fruits of my own ongoing discovery and awakening is to be more revealed. Right, to actually take the time to look deeply at myself and be honest with myself. 
and to share that. So teaching this training program is really the first time that I'm stepping up to start from the ground, from the bottom. And it's not just teaching the evolutionary astrology paradigm. You know, my roots are in that beautiful paradigm in the lineage um, from Jeffrey Wolf Green. But, you know, I've grown. Like we all are. My fruits, my own branches have ex come to, you know, spread out and grow and blossom in their own unique way. And my orientation, my bottom line in the way that I live is I see everything in this life fundamentally, my body, my relationships, everything at the core underneath the surface is a template for my own realization. That's how I see the needle chart. The needle chart reflects back the way each individual soul is wired to unravel and unfurl and remember and return to the essential love that we are, to return to our essence, who we truly are. So looking at the chart from that perspective really becomes a path of compassion, a path of deep insight and understanding the nature of the soul journey that we're all sharing, the nature of this awakening journey, and using the chart to understand that. So this course is really for anyone that wants to study astrology from the ground up, from the perspective of our awakening journey, learning how to understand everything in astrology from the point of view of this is a way to more fully appreciate and understand the nature of this awakening journey. This is the unique way in which we are returning to this understanding of who we truly are, the return to love. And it's really that love-centered, heart-centered way of thinking that is true for me, true for my own practice, true for how I live my own life. And so bringing that into astrology makes the practice of astrology deeply authentic for me. This is for those who are totally new and those who are more practiced, even giving readings. It doesn't matter whether you are completely new to everything astrology or you have more knowledge. For everyone, this is an opportunity to have solid guidance from the ground up, really step by step. So in this training program, we'll be going very slowly, really giving a lot of attention to each detail. So like my own orientation is to give a lot of care and attention to each teaching and to take my time. So the content will be pre-recorded and we'll be meeting live for eight sessions for Q&A and also practice review sessions. There's gonna be a lot of opportunity for review and practice assignments, applying the material, doing practices. And I'll have all students get together in groups. So if you're new, you'll have you know, a partner, two or three people. If you're more experienced, you'll have you know, a group of two or three that will allow us all to work together to train, to practice together. So there's gonna be a community space. There'll be a forum space for our interaction. So that's what it's all about. The course is 10 weeks. It's very possible, depending on how it goes, that I might extend it a little bit. The entire course is divided into five segments. So this is where I can share my screen again and take a moment to breathe. So the Essentials course has five segments and each segment will be released one at a time. And some segments will take, you know, about a week to study. Some segments will take four weeks to study. Um, and the first segment introduction, then we have the zodiac, then we have the astronomy of the needle chart, 12 houses, and then the planets. That's where we end. We're not gonna go into interpreting the chart. We're gonna spend all of this time on just the basics. And that's a part of what really excites me. We're not going to be cramming in, you know, learn everything and now also learn how to read a chart. The Essentials course is just part one. This is an opportunity to become very grounded in the deep philosophical and spiritual understanding of everything in the needle chart. Part two, which will be the chart interpretation course, we'll do that later in the year. That will be about learning aspects and actually beginning to learn interpretive practices and techniques to bring it all together. So I have an early bird discount. Um, the payment is $7.45. And for those that are able to pay the full price, um, oh, I have to change that, available to November 30th. That is not true. It is available until December 10th. <laughs> 
November 30th is when I launch this course. Well, today is the 29th, so I'll fix that. Um, and for everyone else, I have a payment plan option just to make it really accessible. So it's five payments of 160 a month. Um, there are those that have taken the Astrology for the Soul course with me and Kaipacha and other colleagues. And those who have taken this course, they've learned a lot of the content that I'm going to be sharing here. It's going to be, of course, very different, and I'm teaching in a much more thorough way, but I want to to sort of offer some appreciation for those who have studied with me in some capacity already. So there's a special discount for you if you've taken the Astrology for the Soul course, modules one and two. You can get in touch with me to learn more about that if that applies to you. And that's all. I'm going to make all these links live in a moment. And I just want to stick around if anyone wants to ask any questions, if you're feeling to take this and... Um, you're welcome. So we meet eight times. There are 10 weeks. And so all the contents shared through pre-recorded video, you study that at your own pace. And then we have sort of set scheduled meetings for different segments. It's possible we'll meet a little more and it's possible we'll have a couple extra weeks. I'm kind of holding some space around that since this is the first time I'm teaching in this way. I really want to nurture a quality of spaciousness. So that's the construct right now, eight meetings. Yes, you're welcome to unmute yourself or type in any questions if you have anything you wanna share. Otherwise, you're welcome to get in touch with me at any point. Hi, Ari, can I ask you something? How are you? Uh, so I think it's great. Uh, I have taken a lot of astrology, some of you, some of the time, and so I don't know if I will benefit from it or the. I mean, like I would love to support, but I don't know if it's something. I'm curious about going back to basics. That's why I feel into. Even though, like sometimes you think, like you know, talk about Jupiter. Sometimes you think you know, you know, but maybe there's some things that I don't know, and I'm open to knowing uh, differently. Can you can you clear? I, it's there's a lot of static and wind. Maybe hold it closer. Say it again. Yeah, because I've studied. I you know I've studied the whole astrology thing with Simon, but I'm very eager to like invest time and space with you. Um, and I don't know if it's like a course for me. Will I benefit from it? But I'm thinking also, that, you know, talking about the Jupiter thing, saying you know, I think that I know, but maybe I don't know enough. So I'm I'm curious that way that because it's very essential. I think it I could benefit. So I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Great. Thank you for that question. Um, I would say you know for you or for anyone, hold that at the altar, right? Just like keep it there and. Um, it, it let it let it become self-evident. I just really want to invite that sense of like there's guidance, there's calling to take this, and you and anyone are welcome to get in touch to discuss this more. I would say one of the benefits um, for doing this is in terms of you know knowing or not knowing, or I already know this information or not, um, that's something that we each need to you know decide and determine for ourselves. But there's a certain there's a certain energetic field in being in this container, and being in community, and even practicing with you know one or two other people throughout the entirety of the course. So there's something about the container itself, and then having the teachings and sort of the the downloads from the ground up that just sort of deepens and strengthens our own internal knowing. Like for me itself, I feel like I'm also taking this course, and that's a part of the fear. It's like holy shit, like okay. Whew, I'm not just like recapitulating what I know already. I'm actually going to be, you know, taking notes and grounding myself and like really coming into an intentional space before I make each video. So I'm really hoping to learn new as well through this. But yeah, um, I really respect everyone that's already been studying and practicing. And I have no belief in my mind that you need this course because you don't, we don't need anything. Um, and that reminds me too, just sort of, you know, who is taking this program, right? Those who want to become professional astrologers, like, I don't know. That's a part of the Neptune thing. Like, I know what this is for. I'm using astrology in this way to teach as a guide, as a tool, as a practice for understanding our own soul journey. What each individual does with it, yeah, whatever. Each person's path is what it's meant to. There's a possibility that for those that want to continue with me long-term, 
go to the chart interpretation course, and then maybe a year two program that we can actually start to do some certification. It's, it's in the field, but I don't know yet. I'm still going to, I'm going to find out. Yeah. Um, Thank you. That, that answers very much. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Hi, Ari. Yeah. Shelly, I just uh, wanted to get a sense of, uh, in terms of time commitment per week, mm. um, what would you be able to estimate? Because things are pretty busy in my life right now, and I'm very interested in taking the course, but I also don't want to get over my head in terms of a commitment. Good question. Yeah. Um, let, me, let me share the screen again, and that will actually make it easier to answer this. <clears throat> So as we have five segments, I'm, there are two answers. The first answer is each segment will have a certain number of hours of videos. Um, I have in, in a Word document my estimation of, of time for each, you know, how many videos per each segment. But my estimate right here is, you know, segment one is one week. And it might be a couple hours, two, three hours of video content. And then we'll have a meeting at the end of the week. Segment two, probably more like 10 hours, and I'm giving two or three weeks for segment two, and then a meeting. Actually, I think I'm giving three weeks for segment two, three or four, it's written down, and then two meetings during segment two. So each segment has its own length of time according to how much video content and how depth, how much depth of information there is. You know, I'm gonna be teaching all of the signs in segment two, so that's a lot of information right there. And then there are practice assignments as well. But part two of this answer is it's partially a self-paced program. So the only thing that's structured is when I release each segment and then our meetings. And the meetings are just Q&A. And also sometimes we'll be doing practice work together. You can still be studying, you know, let's say segment two material, even while we're doing segment two Q&A. Like you don't lose out by attending the Q&A, even if you haven't watched all of the videos yet. So there's a quality to this where you can do this at your own pace. You get to keep and even download all the video content. You know, segment three will just be one week. Segment you know, four, also one week. Those are much, much more basic information at this point. And then four to six weeks on segment five, going through all the planets. So um, in terms of time commitment, it'll be different per segment, but um, you could imagine if we're taking segment two, the Zodiac, there's about 10 or so hours of video content right there, giving 10 hours, about three weeks worth. And then there's practice work assigning, you know, looking at various charts and identifying basic combinations and signatures and practicing reading elements and modalities and all that kind of stuff. So of course, for everyone, as always, it depends on how much time you want to put into it that will yield the kind of results that we get from it. And it also depends on, you know, what we're ready for. So if you just want to take this course to get the information, get the teachings, but not necessarily spend a couple hours every week doing the practice work, that's fine. If you want to spend the time doing the practice work and be on par with the scheduled Q&A sessions and be able to work with me to go over the material, then, then, then the individual will have to really commit to their schedule to do the work. Um, so it's fluid according to the capacity of each individual and you know really what they're able to do. Part of the reason for having the forum is to have a sense of community connection, but also people can be working out different areas at different times. So I'll be available for that throughout. So did that answer your question adequately? Okay, good, thank you. Anyone else have any questions to ask? Ari Fay posted a question in the chat. Oh yeah. I'm curious if this will be delivered through the lens. Oh, of good question, channel. actually, yeah. So for many years, there are actually certain evolutionary astrology teachings that I've been very excited to sort of come back and teach over again. So for example, the evolutionary stages of the soul, beautiful construct, beautiful, beautiful paradigm of teaching and I have 
insight and perspective that's just sort of blossomed in me on my own journey. And I've never given a full space to teach it in this new way. So the core philosophy, the core perspective of evolutionary astrology is absolutely integrated in this work. I'll be speaking of Jeff Green a lot. And actually, I wanted to speak a little bit right now about that. Just, you know, Jeff Green's work, the lineage itself is really about looking at astrology from the perspective of the soul's evolutionary journey. And that perspective to me is of essence. Like that's when we start looking at anything from that perspective, it's inherently medicinal. It's always useful. So the teachings and the understanding is sort of to totally integrated in my work. But it's not necessarily an evolutionary astrology course in a traditional sense, but it's rooted in it. There'll be many ways in which I'm expanding upon things or teaching it or sharing my perspective of it in my own way, according to my own realizations. Um, in terms of the lens of evolutionary astrology, I mean, it's very similar. Yeah, it's, 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 it's compatible. It's of the same species. Uh, it's just spent time in a bunch of other places. So it, it smells very different. It's been crossbred with other experiences. Let's see this new message here. So if you don't have a background in EA, you won't be lost. No, no, no. So you won't be lost at all if you have no back. If you have no background in anything, because this is all going to be new. So it doesn't matter whether you've been studying EA or if you've been not studying astrology at all. I'm going to be teaching everything for the first time as if it was your first time hearing it, as if it was my first time teaching it. So that's why everything's upgraded. Everything is updated. Everything is expressing the freshness of my own present moment understanding and insight. You know, to give an example of it, the evolutionary sages of the soul, beautiful construct that helps us un to understand that we're all in different stages of evolution and you have to apply the chart accordingly to that. There's a new way to understand the evolutionary stage of the soul without a patriarchal context. In other words, what does the consensus reality look like beyond a patriarchal culture? What does the individuated stages look like beyond a patriarchal culture? And for those that aren't familiar with this construct of evolutionary stages, don't worry, we'll talk about it. Um, there are just a lot of, I think a lot of what I'm excited to bring forth into astrology is not so much how it has to do with our healing of the ways in which we've been thinking, but going more deeply into the gem and the essence of what does it look like to be what we are, how astrology itself reflects our essential nature beyond the paradigm, beyond the construct of healing things and working things out and fixing the past. So the languaging itself is, is also an opportunity to think of everything from the perspective of what's really blossoming, what's really awake, what's really true about who we are. There will be Q&A on the weekends, yeah. I'll be doing the Q&A on Saturdays, probably around noon, so it's relatively universal according to time zone. You know, we'll see if like everyone from Australia signs up for my course, then I'll have to adjust to that. Um, if more people are from the United States, then I'll probably prioritize timing for that. So the timing will be a little bit um, clarified according to, you know, what parts of the world sign up. Okay. So this is a great moment to close. Thank you all so much for joining me, um, this opportunity to share and to launch this program. And again, please feel free to reach out at any point if you have any questions and or just want to talk to me about it to really feel if this is for you. I'm very happy to just connect with really no attachment. I only want what's meant to be to be because I know that only what's meant to be will be. Um, and I'm meant to do this. So that's exciting. Okay. So much love to you all. Happy eclipse. Happy full moon. It's going to be a fun month, really. All right. Bye.